In this episode, we're going to build a follow unfollow feature similar to Twitter using Angular 4 on the front end and Firebase NoSQL on the back end. In order to get started with this lesson, you'll need to have Firebase authentication already wired up in your Angular app. If you don't have that done, check out the link in the top right corner for a lesson completely dedicated to authentication. Let's start by modeling the data. In a standard SQL database, you could set up a many-to-many -many relationship, but since we're dealing with NoSQL, we have to do things a little differently. The database needs to answer two fundamental questions. First, is the current user following any other given user? And second, what is a user's follower count? The first question can be answered by saving a user's followers under their own user ID. And the second question can be answered by doing the exact opposite, saving each followed user ID under their own user ID. Let's start putting this together in a service that we'll call the follow service. First, we import the Angular Fire 2 database. Then we create a function to get a user's followers. This will be used primarily to build the follower count. It simply requests the database object based on the user ID that's passed as an argument. Next, we create a function that will tell us whether or not user A is following user B. It gets past two user IDs as arguments, and will query the database for that specific key value pair. If it returns true, we know that that relationship exists, and if it returns null, then we know that that user is not following the other user. From there, we can start building our follow function, which will update the database with the relationship when the user decides to follow another user. This will make two separate database operations for each of the two collections that we've created. The unfollow method follows the same approach, but instead of updating the database, we just remove that key value pair. Now let's go ahead and build out the component. It's important to first point out that we have a Firebase list observable of users that we've pulled from the database, and we're going to pass that to the child user profile component, and we're also going to pass in the current user that's authenticated in our app. In the user profile component, we start by injecting the follow service, and we also import the size function from Lodash, which will help us with the follower count. The input decorator can be used to accept the variables from the parent component. And we also set a follower count and is following variable, as well as variables for the subscriptions themselves that we can unsubscribe to to prevent memory leaks. First, I set the current user ID and the profile user ID at constants just to make the code a little more readable. Then we can subscribe to the Firebase object observable we define in the service to see if the current user is following the user in this profile. It'll emit a true value if the current user is following this user, and if not, it'll just emit null. Then a second subscription is set up to get the follower count. I set up a separate function to perform the follower count because there's one small caveat that you'll want to be aware of. When a Firebase object observable returns null, it still has a value key on it, and so the lodash size function will return 1 when the real user count should actually be 0. From there, a function is set up to toggle the relationship between the current user and the user's profile. If is following is true, then we trigger the unfollow function, and if it's false, we trigger the follow function. The final step is to tear down these subscriptions during the onDestroy lifecycle hook. In the template, we start by building just a basic user profile. And then we can use the ngif directive along with the new if-then-else syntax in Angular 4 to display a conditional template. When the isFollowing variable is true, we want to display the unfollow button and when it's false, we want to display the opposite follow button. From there, we can create a couple ng templates, each one that has its own button, 
and we'll fire the toggle follow function when the click event occurs. Now if we go back to the app, we can see the follow and unfollow buttons are updating the database in real time. That's it for this episode. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. For just a few bucks a month, you'll get access to exclusive content as well as free one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.